in him and through faith in him we may approach god with freedom and confidence and this is the kind of freedom and confidence that a little kid runs up to their daddy welcome to the bible in one year podcast brought to you by two brits and a bible today is 300 day 343 covering uh visions one two and three All right, Ephesians eats. God eats pink custard. Um, so I was proper blown away, having read through both the Africa and the Apologetics Bible. There's a bit of controversy over the actual author of this because it's within the sort of the Pauline books, as they are said. But actually, it was written so differently to his other books in the style of writing, on the basis that he spent three years in Ephesus. There is such a small amount of like personal greetings and stuff that you find in the other ones through the old greet old Bob around the corner and aunt Sally, make sure that she's happy and all that kind of stuff. Very little of that. Mm. And actually he doesn't within the other letters sort of in and around this to the different churches, he usually is addressing some kind of issue in the church, which most churches is going to have some kind of issue, but there aren't any real major things that he needs to pick up on is like addressing this issue in the church and so actually it was just very differently sort of structured and written along mm. those lines. Um, however, one of the biggest rebuttals to that is actually along the lines of Paul was writing this, intending it to be shared across other churches in the area, not just in Ephesus, particularly right. in Asia Minor uh, sort of area, which is sort of modern day Turkey. So he needed it to be uplifting, encouraging and relevant to multiple churches and multiple people groups. Really. Right, 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 right. And written in and around sort of during part of his um, his jail, what the, his incarceration um, in and around six, AD 60 and 62 uh, when he was in Rome. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much the intro. Love that, mate. Love that. And um, I think in some ways it, it counterintuitive, maybe, but it kind of almost makes sense that your letter to the church you've been with the most could be the one that is in some ways least personal because you've had so much contact time with them yeah. that you don't necessarily need to reinforce that in a letter as much as with the you others. Start, you start referencing everyone you've met. That's the entire book. Yeah, right, right, right. The New Testament doubles in size. Um, so uh, today I'm going to be talking a lot about the doctrine of election. So that just a brief uh, understanding of that, if anyone hasn't heard of that term, it's basically the idea that you don't choose God, God actually chooses you and that you really don't use your, it's not saying you don't have free will, but you don't actually use your free will to choose God. It's like you're pre-selected, you're elected, you're part of the elect. And Ephesians is one of the best places to look for evidence of that. Now, I'm not trying to say that this is hard and cast and if you don't believe this, whatever, I'm just putting forward some interesting thoughts on it. So uh, first one is from verse, uh, it's from 1-4. He chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. So straight away right there, it literally says, look, he chose you at the creation, before the creation of the world. So before even the whole world, before Genesis, he already had chosen you to yeah. be one of the holy and blameless ones in his sight. So that's point one. Good place to start, mate. It's cool. I don't really know where I stand with the whole doctrine of election thing. I am such an experiential Christian. I just sort of like go through it and I have my relationship with God and that's great. I don't I don't conform necessarily to anything. So you'll say that I'm like, cool, most of the time. Um, but yeah, like you said, mate, everyone can have their own opinion on it. Effectively, it's one of those situations where as long as everyone's heart is for Jesus and believing that sort of grace and you know through him we get saved doesn't matter yep. ins and outs and the 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 fine print so yeah you do you and everyone does everyone you know pretty much pretty much yeah um, i was kind of panicked starting ephesians because i might have to just throw a, a photo up of my book of ephesians because it is just an absolute free and minefield of notes there's almost no single verse in ephesians that i do not already have highlighted um, a lot of that was to do with I did the 21 days of prayer a couple of years back and you have to read through it repeatedly to keep pulling stuff out of it. So some of that, for example, you're supposed to be looking at your identity and going through that. I just started off 
And I had like holy, blameless, sonship, grace, redemptive, uh, forgiveness, wisdom, understanding, chosen, predestined, predestined, inclusion, included, marked, uh, God's possession, wisdom, revelation, glorious inheritance, great power. Like just, it was like just constant. And that's just one part of it. And I'm like, oh, there's just way too much in here. But either way, if you do the 21 days of prayer, it was so good. Um, and yeah, I suggest you you do that, really. Love that, dude. And yeah, I've already seen the picture you're going to share with the viewers. It's it's insane. It's great. Good, good stuff. Um, just quickly touching on what you were saying before about the most important thing is relationship and believing in Jesus and everything. Um, so this is just from 114. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. So we talk a lot about Holy Spirit, but that word seal it is, you know, it is, it is final that you are his and he is yours, right? Yeah. And so like you say, how that came about isn't anywhere near as important as the fact that it does come about. Absolutely. That's the, that's the important thing. That's good, fella. I like that. Well, but, awesome. um, so one thing I want to touch on, I'm going to touch on just a couple of things, I think, for today. The first one is 117, if I can find it through my own scribbles. Um, the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Um, so, sorry. I keep asking that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious father may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I think one thing I've been realizing is so many individual verses can be read and appreciated, but until they're put into context of like, Oh yeah, spirit of wisdom and revelation. Great. But it's so we can get to know him better. It's not so that we can become wise and understand more. It's so that we can turn it back as praise and worship and get to know him. Um, yeah. That's good. Contextualizing the Bible is always good. Oh, Love that's that. a bit extra on there as well. So that we would know the hope to which he's called you. So what do you want me to do, God? Well, we're praying for wisdom and revelation so that you can get to know him so that you can then get to know the hope to which he's called you to do. So, yeah, that whole thing. Sorry. Love that, dude. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, I'm aware of the time. I know you've got at least one more big point you want to do. I'll keep this one quick. Like I said, everything today really points to the the doctrine of election so it then says in two verses one and two you were dead in your transgressions and sins there's more to it but ultimately i'll just keep it simple if you're dead then you can't possibly choose or not choose god right god has to breathe life back into you turn you back around i'm tempted to just go on a bit of a roll for a, a minute and then you have the rest of the episode no, it's such a short point dude just leave me a couple of seconds at the end cool all right so then 312 actually is your thing so i'm just going to leave that one uh, so then 318, um, which is actually my last point, so not that many to go through anyway. We may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. So something else that I want you to understand, if the doctrine of election is true, even if it's not, as long as you are truly saved, that once you are saved as the chosen, as the elect, you the Lord's love for you is truly astonishing okay like even the bible cannot sum up how much god loves you once you are his and i just love that verse for that 318 his width length height depth of love and i just can't wait to learn more about that once hopefully in a long time i get to the old pearly gates smashing fella i love it I realized that I had that as a, a note, but I hadn't really. Yeah, yeah, there's just, I think my note was just, there's so much in there. You've done it really well. I love it because the way that it explains it is like how, uh, well, it's just, there's so much in there. It's like we need to try and grasp how big this all is, but actually how how it surpasses knowledge it's like kind of a contradiction in itself really like just yeah. to try and grasp it we can't because it's too flipping massive exactly um, the final point i'm going to make is a hugely hugely important one but super short uh two verse 12 in him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. And this is the kind of freedom and confidence that a little kid runs up to their daddy. Like my little girl, Kinsey, came running up to me at the park today so many times. Just like big grin, eyes, hands wide open. It's like that's how we should be approaching God with reverence, but in relationship, in love, because he is our father. And yeah. we need that freedom, that intimacy and relationship with him. That's good, dude. All right. So tomorrow is day 344 with Ephesians 4, 5 and 6. 
why don't you people, beautiful people, pick up the Bible, read, share, like, see you tomorrow.